Pet Shop Boys are coming. Should be good fun. It's going to turn our lives around, that's for sure, for a few weeks. How long have you been waiting out here? Four hours. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, quite long. You've been hours. here for four hours? Four hours. Yes. And how long will you wait? Uh, until they come yeah. out. And what will you say when they come out? Yeah. Oh, hi, Mia. Sure. Hi, Chris. I think, yeah, and I think I say great start for tomorrow night. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And we're so happy to see the show. What happens is on this... Right, curtain is down. So not even, no one's seeing us. Are people yeah. allowed to get up and dance in the show? They shouldn't do on the balconies because it's mainly a seated theatre and they should stay, you know, people have to stay in their seats. It's a small building, the stage is quite limited, that we only have a certain number of people that we can perform to each night and the demand for tickets is quite high. Tomorrow night being the opening night is going to be particularly difficult because, of course, there's lots of family and friends and then everybody who's associated with the business of the Pet Shop Boys wants to be here to wish them well when really they would be doing me a big favour by staying away, actually. I've got no problems. Everything going fine? Absolutely Everything's fine. going smoothly? Yeah, fine. Yeah. So what's your job? I'm the production manager. And what does that involve? Um, looking after everybody in there, really. Looking after the stage, making sure everything that happens on stage happens the way, the way it should. And is everything happening as it should at the moment? Um, it could be misread that it's not. By the opening night, we should be bored. Are you worried about tomorrow night? You no, I don't, I don't give everything. a shit, actually. <laughs> to be in the West End, having name it in lights, and no one's ever done it. We always try to do something that no group's ever done before, and there's no pop group ever played, even this is only two and a half weeks, a limited season in the West End. What they do in the theatre is they all hold hands and then they go... Sorry? Like that, and then okay. they, go, I don't know. they do that, don't they? Actors. They do. When, when's the curtain rehearsal? Because I know what happens. We do that in the dress that rehearsal. That we do it in the technical rehearsal, and then you do it in the dress rehearsal. Okay, fine. So anyway, so okay, the so curtain comes down then. Form. We could pop out the curtain. We drop the and curtain. just give one last wave, so, and then then sneak back. So what oh, I'm Neil, <laughs> well, I'm going to do it anyway. So, I think you'll find that, that when the curtain goes down on that time, there'll be there'll be there'll be there'll be hats and coats time. <laughs> <laughs> and you, me, and Sylvia can do a. We do the bow. The Simon Callow painted The bow. Simon Callow oh, bow. And then, then you got to clap the audience. Oh, that that yeah. always must want to throw No, off. really, it was all you. What was it that, that woman said on... Um, I just like to thank you all go to my lovely little show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and I love you all. Yeah, thank you and I love That's you all. That's it. Mwah! My backing vocals are live, keyboards, some of the keyboards are live, acoustic guitars are live. And this isn't pre-mixed, so that, depending on which bits are being played live, this can be rebalanced as well and also because it's not the same as just playing a CD in your living room. Yeah. Quite. While we're on this CD, can we just play before? Because on this, the lead line and the chord thing definitely need to be... in the first track? First track, yeah. <laughs> Good man. How much of the music in the show is pre-recorded? Pre-record is possibly not the best word, but 99, nearly everything. Everything apart from what Chris and Neil play. Yeah, I can have whatever notes I want. You can just add anything. It's all on tape. I'm only pretending. <laughs> no, I like to mime properly. I like to mime the right notes. Do you ever worry about hitting the wrong note? Yeah, all the time, yeah. Because I do all the time. We'll find a way up. Now, where am I for that? Here or there? Here. Yeah. We'll find a way up. Oh, it's a nice box. Eh? He's never been able to sing that song very well. It's a singing song. Yeah, but it's not 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 a singing song. Yeah, but Somewhere. Which bit of it does he have trouble All singing? All of it. We came out of the 80s when it was an advantage not to be a good musician and not to be a good singer. Unfortunately, things have turned around in the 90s. For us, anyway. How do you mean? Now everyone can do everything now. The musos have taken over. Whenever we do a cover version, it tends to be Chris's idea. He chose always my mind. 
Streets Have No Name, etc. He chose them all. It's a backstage drama. <laughs> I've always liked a backstage drama. Sometimes it's quite interesting because it's, it's actually the same theme as Go West. It's about. You look at your eyes in a mirror for one second. It's about finding promised land. It's one of the constant themes of pop music, actually. You know, escaping from. So many pop songs come out of being fed up with uh, an urban situation, with violence and chaos and prejudice. Um, and Go West is one of those kind of songs. And Somewhere is one of those kind of songs. Do you think the word West is quite important for us? Because <laughs> two of our biggest hits are Western Girls and Go West. And this is from West Side Story. <laughs> we're in the West End. Uh, we're in the West End now. And our, the first name for our group was, was um, West End. Really? Before we were called the Pet Shop Boys, we were called West End. When we first had a demo tape, it said West End. Welcome to London's fabulous, world-renowned Savoy Theatre. Here we are in the beautiful box office of the Savoy. Apparently, they use the world's entire supply of silver leaf. Um, um, going downstairs towards the theatre, which is underground, which is very unusual. I suppose it's something to do with the noise, because we have the Savoy Hotel just next door. Very posh, you know. This is um, the bar area. Here we have gentlemen, if you want gentlemen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let's go into the box, because it's fabulous in there. Come with me. It's brilliant. In the box, we have our own private lounge area, where you can have your little private party. You can do your whatever you do in your private parties in this lovely area. Look up at the ceiling. Starry, eh? There's an exit door there, which goes into the stalls bar. And remember, behind the ladies' loo there is the very bad exit door I told you about, which tends to smell because of the homeless. And that is the door you have to make sure is always closed. I was in the, the People's Theatre in Newcastle right. when I was um, from, uh, from 11 to 18. And it was great. We used to have acting class and all that stuff. And um, I've learned quite a lot from that, but I did learn actually I can't act. Most things make me nervous. Right. Going into clubs can make me nervous. I always feel like I'm not going to get in the club. <laughs> so I've always, my, all my childhood, it was always like stressful as to whether you're going to get in or not, you know. And like, you know, I was the classic person on the receiving end of, you know, you can't come in, you know, in trainers or, sorry, it's members only night. How do you like being a pop star? Well, you, we go in and out of it because. Um, you are a pop star when you're doing a pop star activity. And we have huge stretches where we're not doing that. Um, I definitely draw a line between being on and being off, as it were. Some of them being Neil Tennant. That's where you get a bit of a surprise. If someone recognizes me in safe ways, I get a bit taken aback. I think, no, I'm not on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not him at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm the real one. You're not famous? No. You don't think you're famous? No. Robbie Williams is famous. Yeah. He can't move, can he? Can't leave someone. his front door. I'm just a regular guy. I tend to wear them like that. Yeah. <laughs> and glasses, just in case there's any glance or anything. As I say, I think we have quite a nice little thing because we're not, we're not like uh, someone who has like Michael Jackson or, or someone or, or, or the Spice Girls at the moment who have an intense level of fame and everything they do is of potential interest. Um, we can sort of do anything without being noticed. Which I think is quite nice, really. We're more of a brand name than an image. I'm responsible for merchandise at this event. This is £15. Programme is £5. The other T-shirt's also 15 Everybody tries to get freebies. The other groups I work for, it's everyone from Status Quo through to Peter Andre and Boys Zone through to E17. Which fan group buy more things? Well, I'm not being biased here, but Pet Shop Boys have got a really faithful, hard sample, and they buy merchandise if it's right, like Fury. We're not trying to force merchandise down people's throats or dazzle them with choice. What we're trying to do is come up with a quality select choice of merchandise that isn't cheap. We've had about a week and a half to do three t-shirts, a sweatshirt, a badge, two posters, loads of advertisements, a neon sign that was done in a weekend, and a 38-page tour brochure. Do you ever think all that the, the stuff that goes around music gets in the way of people appreciating music? No, and... not really. It's a side seller to the main course, isn't it? That's, that's all it is. You don't have to eat it. Well, I think my afternoon tea's arrived, does it? Oh, it has as well. Excellent. This is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> now, this, has, this is the first time this has happened. Or is it lapsang? 
Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Perfect. Yeah. Right. I hope this is putting out the wrong impression. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not waited on hand and foot. If Chris is hungry, he'll say, "Do you hungry?" You know, I say, "What did you need?" And I'll go and get it. And they'll eat together, but their diets are slightly different. Chris likes, you know, he likes good food, but also he'll eat junk food. They read different newspapers. One's sort of like, you know, the up the top of the market range, and then there's the tabloids. The rooms have to be tidy, no mess. Make sure that they've got their things in there. Neil likes wine, he'll right. know, so, and Chris will have beers. What do they do when you go on holiday? Well, funny enough, I haven't actually had a holiday. Well, I like to have um, a summer one and a winter, you know, a summer beaching it one. But I like to have two of those. I like to have one in the summer and one in the winter, but I also like to have a a winter holiday as well, skiing holiday or something. In eight years, I haven't actually had a holiday as such. I've got a wife and two kids. Is that yeah. who looks after you? Uh, well, I have to look after them, I suppose. So is it like having two more children looking after Neil and Chris? <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, I mean, because you, you know, you, you, you mother them, but you don't. You just, when we're on the road, mm. I'll take care of everything. It's now uh, 11 minutes past six. Yeah. We're going to start the dress rehearsal, dress rehearsal at seven o'clock. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. No. We're just not really having anyone. I'd rather she didn't. Just say, just that it's better with an audience because there's huge gaps and everything. There's not, there's not really anyone coming, so she's, they're not, neither of them are missing anything. <laughs> okay, bye. That's why I asked you. So, do you think we'll be okay for seven? Or do you want? We, are we'll we definitely okay for seven. Okay, we'll no, be ready. In. Have you got people coming to see the dress rehearsal? Not really, no. no. Just more okay. for So, regardless, here. regardless of who's here or seven who's coming, seven o'clock on the dance. dance. Neil told me that you do everything lying down. Is that true? Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Um, what do you mean by everything? He said you have your makeup done lying down. Is oh yeah, true? I do. Too. And yeah, you work I do. Lying down. Yeah, right now. I do. Good point. I don't know why my keyboards aren't in a lying down position. I think that'd be good, wouldn't it? That'd be a fun first. <laughs> do you like, do you like... <laughs> They're sort of suspended here. <laughs> my dad used to call me. Um, what did he used to call me? Kipper. Because I used to kip all the time, and nothing's changed. Les, do you want your wig on first, or mm. do you want to take put the jacket on? And well, I'm going to take this off anyway, because I'm not going to be sat in all the wig and thing and be sweating like a pig before I go on stage. Right. Okay. It doesn't spell any sense. Okay. So do you like what you do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you get a bit fed up because I've been doing it for so long. But uh, what do you get fed up with? Getting ready to go out to work. Right. When you're there, it's okay, but sometimes yeah. it's the getting ready and putting your face on. Well, one of the tours was how many wigs was it? 46 wig changes and 180 costume <laughs> changes. No. It was, it was the one where you went. 59 wig changes. <laughs> that was... You got that wrong. I'm not even practiced taking this off. Or, or, I, no, I haven't done gloves. Where are the gloves? I need to put the gloves on underneath. Yeah, but you're not putting them on now, are you? Yeah. You're going to get ready. Take them all to your room. God, don't let my mum see this. She doesn't like when I do these sort of things. Why? No, she just don't like it. She won't come and see. I used to dance with Michael Clark a long time and then. There was a little bit section in there where I'd seen the audience in drag. My sisters, all my sisters and my cousins came to see the performance. I was in a blonde wig or something, waiting till they were like that. No response, it was so weird. I and mean, I tried to get my mum to come, she went, no, I don't like either of them kind of things.
still not there, for instance? Look, it's great this thing's not there because I know I, uh, my, I have to do my, all my cues by sheer instinct. No, I know, I know, because you were struggling on that and, you know, because you didn't have any of those... I didn't have any of the noises that yeah. come to let you know where you are. Yeah. It's the same flipping cord just going round and round. No, I said to Webin to turn it up, thinking that's what it was, the problem, that you couldn't hear it. And when Neil came off, he said, oh, it's too loud, it's too loud, so we'll have to mention really it like to him. Like I said, I still think Robbie's still working on a few things. I don't think, I mean, obviously, in a dress rehearsal situation, Robbie still feels he's in a position that he can pull down darts. Well, I, I would have thought that's precisely what he wouldn't think, a dress rehearsal, because it's a dress rehearsal. <laughs> Good glasses, these, aren't they? Philip Stark. We're here all day. All right. So we're still, we are still working on things, and obviously we're still running all of that gear all day before you come, you know. Good, OK. But we'll just have to trust difficult words. <laughs> Acoustic, yeah? You're very booky, and you're, but you're in a strange job. <laughs> it's not that you're a strange dance. person. It's got nothing to do with it. You're frankly bizarre. Do you ever have arguments? Not arguments, really. Are they? We have the occasional scene. The scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not really an argument. <laughs> Just Neil can never admit he's wrong about anything. He's got a real problem. Chris, <laughs> unfortunately, has the same problem. <laughs> Neil's just too erudite for me. <laughs> Should help if I knew what it meant. Neil? <laughs> Can I? Sorry. Can I have my Okay. When you, when you took the picture of Chris, did he have his hat on or not? He did. He always has his hat on. Find me a picture with Chris without his hat on. Can do another one? Okay. Well, that might be a bit weird. It's not worth even lemonade. No, okay. Well, no, let's give it to you to clear up. Oh, yeah, you can't have Chris smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it was very calm last time because we only had one person um, in the show, the importance of being Oscar with Simon Keller, so it was very calm. So this is much more exciting and the time passes much quicker. <laughs> I say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's concert will commence at 8 o'clock. There will be one interval of 20 minutes and may I remind you that the Savoy Theatre operates a no-smoking policy and smoking is prohibited in all parts of the theatre. Thank you for your cooperation. And I'm usually sat here with a cigarette in my hand when I'm doing it. So how do you feel about tonight? Do you feel nervous? No. If you go into Nilsson, you'll see him eating, but... Right. Um, you don't eat I just, No, I just drink tons of alcohol. What for the next chorus? For the next chorus, you come two down and make down. two steps down, keep yourself central, yes. take, take the first chorus to get there, the second chorus you still. Because you never have to work again, do you? Well, I mean, you got enough Apple royalties. No, you but yeah, we always have to keep releasing. Why do you think we keep releasing records? <laughs> it's Is not because we money? want to. It's not because we enjoy making it. It's because... No, because right. no, every time we go to our accountants, we've always got the same amount of money in the bank. It's like, can't we just stop at this point, sort of get the advance and then stop? And then you'd, you'd be better off, but it's always whittled down by the time you... So you have to release another one. Would you, would you prefer to stop? I wouldn't mind stopping for about... Five years or something. But what then you've you got do? to come back then, and that's even worse. <laughs> oh, look who's arrived. Look at this. I've got some of your flowers. No, I've got some of your... Actually, none of mine are to me. They're all to both of us. But there's another one there, look, just to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what's wrong? It's, it's completely paranoid. What's he paranoid about? He's saying no one sent him any flowers. In fact, there's now two lots in to him. It's true, I get, it's like all the letters, all mine are always begging letters from children's hospices. Not that I've got a thing against children's hospices. Far from it. 
And Neil gets all the kind of like sincere ones, you know, to him. It's a pit they don't do telegrams anymore, isn't it? Do you ever get jealous of each other that one has more fans than the other? No. <laughs> Absolutely not, no. He's perfection. He's perfection personified. I think he's indescribable, really. <laughs> he's your, what's it called? He's a, a universal man, is that correct? Well, he's someone who can do everything. He's a universe, a renaissance man, that's it. He's impulsive, but uh, he's also, if he wants to do something, he does it. Nothing stands in the way. Um, you know, it's quite impressive sometimes, really. In fact, what was a renaissance man called, though, before the renaissance? <laughs> So what was he called then? He was probably called the Universal Man. <laughs> In fact, he was, because he was Greek. And the Greeks were before the Renaissance, weren't they? Of course they were. It's wishing you all the very best for the first show. Break a leg. I've never understood the break a leg bit. It's quarter to seven. Oh, you're going to have to go. Break a leg. Yeah, see ya. We're opening the door in five minutes. to do anything like this, and here I am. But then when you go on, it's, it's quite good fun, really.